Welcome back. As you know, I'm Eli the Computer Guy here for The Daily Blob, where I will remind you that the product, the vendor, and the technology are all different things. Uh, I think about this. Uh, last year, I had a buddy of mine who was investing in NVIDIA, and he was asking me whether uh, there was an NVIDIA bubble. Uh, and I explained to him that I think that there is an AI bubble. Uh, what that means for NVIDIA stock, I don't know, right? As a technology professional, I would hedge my bets when it comes to artificial intelligence. Uh, but what does that mean for NVIDIA as a company? Uh, one of the things that we've seen is Tesla, right? Tesla is Tesla's doing whatever the hell it's doing. I'm not quite sure what they're doing anymore. I don't even know what kind of company they are anymore. Uh, but their stock price seems to be doing good enough. Uh, depending on the day, it's either up or it's down. It's still worth a tremendous amount of money uh, compared to what they're actually doing. And that's what one of the issues you run into in the, uh, the investment world is there's a difference between like what's going on in the world and what's going on with the technology and then what's going on uh, with the stock itself. And one of the big issues that I see currently is that when people talk about things like artificial intelligence, one of my frustrations is that they hyper-focus on LLMs and they hyper-focus on NVIDIA as if this is artificial intelligence, right? Artificial intelligence in products has been out for years. Tesla has been using artificial intelligence, machine learning in their vehicles uh, for somewhat autonomous driving for a long time now. Uh, we've had computer vision systems, we've had computer speech systems, we've had um, stock analysis systems, we've had all of these uh, AI systems, uh, but for some reason, uh, when ChatGPT comes out, now all of a sudden people think that is AI. There's this concept of how, how are they going to turn an LLM into a general AI? I don't think that's gonna happen. If we do get general AI, it's going to be a whole bunch of different systems uh, to get us there. But that's one of the big issues that we run into, right? Like when you think about, um, again, artificial intelligence, everybody thinks about NVIDIA. They don't think about uh, AMD or they rarely think about AMD. <laughs> They barely think about Intel, right? But there's this idea that NVIDIA is the AI company. And it's very important to understand that no, they are simply selling the most popular hardware right now. Uh, they do happen to be the most valuable company in the space, but that does not actually mean they own the space. And so be careful with things like investment and investing in your future, your career, that you do not go down a path simply because that's where you think uh, things are going. Uh, this comes up uh, with um, the custom chips uh, that a lot of these uh, oh different cloud providers are now currently using. Uh, so Amazon we'll talk about today, uh, but also uh, with Google and with uh, Microsoft and with Meta. One of the interesting things that doesn't get talked about a whole lot is that they are actually coming out with their own silicon, right? So just like um, Apple came out with the M series of processors uh, for their systems, uh, the uh, these major players, they're creating their own silicon, uh, but it's not for commercial use. You cannot buy a laptop with their silicon in it. Uh, it's simply being used within their own infrastructure. So they have just insanely large uh, cloud infrastructure. So literally simply providing their own processors for their own data centers, there is enough of a need there that that makes a lot of sense. Uh, so this comes up uh, from CNBC, uh, from AWS. AWS custom chip strategy is showing results and cutting into NVIDIA's AI dominance. Uh, so AWS has their own uh, custom chip. Uh, they continuously are improving it. Uh, and basically what they're looking at is that for, for the loads that they're putting on their systems, they are able to design a chip that is able to perform better uh, than NVIDIA's processors will. I do think this is kind of interesting, like in the whole world of going from CPUs to GPUs, and GPUs have been able to dominate for a long time now because they do a special type of mathematical process, right? So CPUs are general purpose uh, processing units that are designed to do literally everything, right? If you wanna play a video game, it'll give you the graphics for the video game. If you're doing databases, if you're doing surveillance systems, right? You, 
you slap a CPU in, and especially if you got an Intel CPU, the idea was that it was a good general purpose uh, CPU. Uh, the idea with the GPUs is that they were focused specifically on that graphical output. So it's not running your operating system. It's not running a database. It's not doing all of these general purpose computing things. It's doing something very specific. And so that's why they were good uh, for doing video game graphics, right? The CPU, the CPU figures everything out, sends information to the GPU. The GPU actually renders the graphics, right? Very good for that. And, and then the um, uh, for AI, basically how those GPUs worked, uh, they just happen to be really good uh, for AI. But the thing is, is when you look at these NVIDIA GPUs in the modern world, they are actually almost a general purpose device, right? They're a general purpose uh, GPU, right? You can use them to play video games or you can use them to do AI. You can use them to do different things with AI, right? You can use them to train AI or you could use them to run a model, right? So they're actually a general purpose uh, device in this point in time. And so what we saw before is going from CPUs to GPUs is if, that if you can narrow down uh, what the device is supposed to do, you can actually eke out a hell of a lot of better performance. And that's one of the things we've seen with Apple creating their own processors, all other companies now creating their own processors, is they design their silicon uh, not to be general purpose, but to do whatever it is they want their computers to do. So it becomes interesting here with these large companies, uh, AWS, Google, the whole nine yards, when they're talking about buying hundreds of millions of processors. They're not buying one processor. They're not buying a thousand processors. They're not even buying a hundred thousand processors. They're buying millions of processors or hundreds of thousands of processors. One of the things is at their scale, they can start looking at it and saying, hey, if we specifically design processors to complete the specific tasks that we need accomplished, we can actually squeak out a lot better performance. And I think this is gonna be a curious thing with NVIDIA going into the future and a curious thing with the whole idea of basically what NVIDIA is worth. Uh, remember, uh, first mover advantage uh, generally isn't. <laughs> The, the first mover uh, into a particular field uh, shows everybody else how valuable that field is, and then they generally get crushed later. Just one of those things to, to kind of ponder here. So anyways, from CNBC, Amazon Web Services is set to announce an update to its Graviton 4 chip uh, that includes 600 gigabits per second of network bandwidth that the company calls the highest offering in the public cloud. Uh, Ali Sadi, a, a distinguished engineer at AWS, likened the speed to a machine reading 100 music CDs a second. Graviton 4, a general uh, processing unit or CPU, is one of many chip products that, uh, that come from Amazon and Aperna Labs in Austin, Texas. The chip is a win for the company's custom strategy and putting it up against traditional semiconductor players like Intel and AMD. So basically the idea is instead of buying from these other people and they get their profit margins, you design it yourself and then you basically just buy it yourself. Uh, but the real battle is with NVIDIA and the AI infrastructure space. Uh, at AWS reInvent 2024 conference last December, the company announced Project Rainier, an AI supercomputer built for startup Anthropic. AWS has put $8 billion into backing Anthropic. AWS Senior Director for Customer and Product Engineering, Gaddy Hutt, said Amazon is looking to reduce AI training costs and provide an alternative to NVIDIA's expensive graphics uh, processing units or GPUs. Anthropic's Claude opened this 4 AI model launched on Tranium G GPUs, according to AWS, and Project Rainier is powered by over half a million of the chips, an order that would have traditionally gone to NVIDIA. And that's the thing, you think about the value of NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA is trying to sell products. If um, Amazon is buying half a million of their own processors. That's simply not an order that goes to NVIDIA. Uh, Hutt said that while NVIDIA's Blackwell is a higher performing chip than Tranium 2, the AWS, chi AWS chip offers better cost performance. Quote, Tranium 3 is coming up this year and it's doubling the performance of Tranium 2 and is going to save energy by an additional 50%, he said. 
So American companies actually care about elect electricity cost, and so they're able to get the same performance for a 50% uh, less electricity. The demand for these chips is already outpacing supply, according to Rami Sino, Director of Engineering at AWS Annapurna Labs. Quote, our supply is very, very large, but every single service that we build has a customer attached to it, he said. The Graviton 4's upgrade on the Horizon and Project Rainier's Tranium chips, Amazon is demonstrating this broader ambition to control the entire AI infrastructure stack from networking to training to inference uh, and as more uh, major AI models like Claude 4 prove they can train successfully on non-NVIDIA hardware the question isn't whether AWS can compete with a chip giant it's how much market share it can take um, so this will be an interesting thing to think about uh, going into the future right uh, NVIDIA if you look at NVIDIA stock right it was it was not that high uh, a while ago uh, NVIDIA stock. All right, let's see. We take a look at the stock chart and we go out to the max. Increase this. Basically, just, just so you understand how stratospheric NVIDIA's uh, stock price has, uh, has gone up. I mean, look at this. Look at this. So in, in 2016, 2016, NVIDIA's share price was $1.43 a share. Uh, if you go to uh, 2022, it was at $13 a share. So three years ago, it was at $13 a share, and now it's up at $145 a share. So what's really important to understand here is that people, people didn't really understand how valuable all this was going to be. If you went back three years ago, if you went back not even 10 years ago, six or seven years ago, NVIDIA was a video game, basically created graphics cards for video games and you know, GPUs were used for AI, right? Oh, you're gonna be doing some kind of AI workload, you know, get a GPU. But people didn't care that much about AI. It's very interesting with this whole artificial intelligence thing. If you go back not that many years ago, AI was able to do a lot of really cool stuff and most people didn't give a damn. <laughs> Most people didn't care, right? If you were in the world of AI, you needed better GPUs. If you weren't in the world of AI, nobody was talking about it. And in an incredibly short order, that has massively changed. And so NVIDIA, since NVIDIA is already creating the hardware, since NVIDIA's hardware is best in class, they have been able to basically profit off of the rise of this thing that we currently call artificial intelligence as more and more companies uh, try to buy their products. The curious thing to be thinking about though is that they are proving demand for this market. There was not a lot of competition in this market 10 years ago because there wasn't a lot of demand in this market. How how valuable is the video game market really at the end of the day? There's money there, but you're not going to get a hell of a lot of competition. Uh, on the other hand, uh, now that they've proved the AI market is worth trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars, uh, that makes it worthwhile for other companies uh, to go after. And not only that, uh, NVIDIA is having to deal with their own customers who are literally so large, they can literally have custom silicon uh, manufactured, right? So initially, when Amazon or whoever else is doing their initial deployment of artificial intelligence, they're not gonna build their own silicon, do all that kind of engineering. They're just gonna buy stuff basically off the shelf, very expensive, but off the shelf stuff. And then as they go along, as they see there's more and more demand, then they're gonna start asking the question, huh, does it make sense that we buy this off the shelf or should we start thinking about um, basically building our own product. Uh, once you get up to half a million processors being required, that really starts to, to shift the balance. So companies like Google and Meta and all that, they start thinking, hey, not only can we probably produce processors at a lower overall cost, but we can actually design them to solve our specific problems all of that starts hammering and it's amazing you know how quickly you know a share price can go from from a dollar 45 to 145 back to a dollar 45 so that's the thing i would be concerned about here and i would uh, i would question uh, the other thing that i would look at too uh, you know i talk about this whole china thing and artificial intelligence one of the big things to consider is whenever uh, people are comparing china uh, with US artificial intelligence, they're always comparing with NVIDIA. I do also think it's interesting to look at these other 
oh, these other stories from the other vendors, again, Amazon and Google and Meta, and look at what they're doing. And then also just ask, is China nearly as far behind uh, as we think they are? That simply by designing processors in a different way, that type of thing, they may, they may get to the solutions that they require uh, without needing uh, NVIDIA GPUs, right? There, there are a number of different ways to solve the exact same problem. Uh, and so it's important not to hyper-focus on the way that you solve the problem and think that's the only way to do it. So anyways, there you go. There are some things. Amazon is producing their own AI processors that are supposedly 50% more efficient than NVIDIA. Again, for this one project, they need half a million of those processors. What do you think about NVIDIA and Google, or I'm sorry, what do you think about AWS and Google and Microsoft pr producing their own chips? What do you think about that that does to the, 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 tech, the, the tech industry, right? We, we had the duopoly for a long time, Microsoft and Intel, that's what everything was built off of. As we start getting more and more of this custom technology, what do you think that means for us as technology professionals? Right when I got my MCSE, uh, whether whether you worked at a hospital or whether you worked for a military defense contractor or whether you worked for construction or whether you worked at a nonprofit organization, everybody had Intel computers running Windows Server and Windows client operating systems and generally using Cisco equipment. Right? Didn't matter where you went as long as you got your MCSE and your CCNA, you were good to get hired by anybody. In this modern world, we're starting to see more and more of this technology being divergent, right? Different systems for different customers, that type of deal. What do you think that means for you being a technology professional uh, moving forward? I don't know. Some things to ponder, some things to think about. So with that, see y'all later.